What's going on out there, everybody? Today, we're looking at video games monthly for the month of October. We're gonna dive into this box, but before we do, I wanna thank everybody who was out there who watched the first video. I got a lot of, a lot of people who gave me a lot of good feedback and what they wanna see next in these videos as it moves on into the future. So, what I'm gonna do this time around is I'm gonna unbox the games. I don't know what's inside here. Uh, people did suggest that I open the box first and kind of look at the games, but I want to get I want you to get an authentic reaction of my reaction of you know first getting that game out of there, first pulling the game out of the box, pulling it out of that bubble wrap, and you know getting excited about it. So what I'm gonna do this time around is I've got my handy dandy capture card, and I'm gonna start reviewing some of the games that I get. So you can uh, follow along with that, watch those reviews on the games. They're going to be really short reviews. I'm just going to give you my initial thoughts about the game and uh, what kind of game it is, what kind of genre does it fit into, uh, you know, and I'll, we'll talk about the game. Be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. It really helps out the page. It keeps me going. So let's jump into this box. Let's start the show. Alright, so let's dive into this thing and let's see what we get. First one is an N64 game, Star Wars Shadow of the Empire. Alright, that's a good game, good one to start off with. Uh, so, I'm going to skip over to the review. Check it out. Released on December 3rd, 1996 by LucasArts, Star Wars Shadow of the Empire is primarily a third-person shooter for the N64. The player controls Dash Rendar helping Luke Skywalker rescue Princess Leia from Prince Zizor. Shadow of the Empire was the third best-selling N64 game for the year of 1997, selling over one million copies. The first level takes place during the Battle of Hawk and requires the player to destroy Imperial probe droids, AT walkers, and eventually use the tow cable to take down the Imperial walkers. The slightest movement of the N64 joystick will move the player all over the place. The controls do take a little bit of getting used to, but with a little practice, you will be bullseyeing womp rats in your T16 just like Luke did back home, and they're only 2 meters. The second level is from the third person perspective, and the controls have not aged well. As Dash, you will move through the stages with plenty of targets in your path. Controlling Dash and shooting the blaster can be a chore at times. The auto-targeting system doesn't seem to allow you as the player to strafe, so when you are firing your blaster, you are stuck in one position. This makes the third person sequences challenging because the player will take hits. Good thing the stormtroopers have the same aim that they do in the movies, and I imagine their aim gets a little more precise as the levels ramp up in difficulty. Overall, the game does require some patience and practice in order to further progress through the levels. I would recommend this game to anyone who is a fan of the N64 or the Star Wars series. Back to the game room. Alright, here we go. Game number two. Sega Genesis, Loose Cart, Sonic Spinball. So I got Sonic Spinball again. Uh, must not have checked that one off the list. Uh, yeah, so it was weird that they sent me two. Maybe I didn't check it off the list. Oh, I did. Developed by Sega Technical Institute and published by Sega, Sonic Spinball is a pinball game released in 1993 for the Sega Genesis. In the game, the player controls Sonic the Hedgehog in a pinball-like mechanic that pits you against the evil Dr. Robotnik. 
Sega Technical Institute is an American company, and while the Japanese Sonic team was developing what would become Sonic 3, Sega realized they would not have a Sonic game in stores for the holiday season. Sonic Spinball suffers from some control issues and some slowdown. It is safe to say that this is one Sonic game that does not harness the Sega Genesis's blast processing power. The game in total has four levels and didn't keep my interest enough for me to complete the first one. I would recommend this game only if you can pick it up for a very cheap price. Otherwise, I'd save your money and spend it elsewhere. Well, that's kind of a bummer. Uh, I didn't expect to, to get a double of a game. Uh, so, what else we got? We've got... And lo and behold, you got to update your library, otherwise you'll get doubles of the same game. Apparently, I, I left that off there. Um, if I didn't, you know, I'll let you know in the next video, but I'm pretty sure that I actually checked that off the list. I'd be surprised if I didn't. Alright, next one, NES game, Excite Bike. I'm, I'm seeing a trend here. So, they sent me doubles, and I know, I know I checked this one off the list. Um, so this is a bummer so far. Video Games Monthly, uh, didn't do so hot this month. But, either way, I'll, uh, I'll show the review on it. Excite Bike is a motocross racing game released for the arcades in 1984. Eventually, the arcade game was ported as a launch title for the Nintendo Famicom, and later, what would become the Nintendo Entertainment System. The player has the choice of three different playstyles. The first playstyle is called Selection A, and similar to a time attack in gameplay in which the player tries to complete the course obstacles with the lowest time possible. The A button will move the player and the D-pad will control the player moving up or down on the track. If a player is airborne, they are able to control the way they land by using the D-pad controller buttons. The B button causes faster acceleration but also increases the motorcycle's temperature displayed below. If the motorcycle heats up too much, the player will be immobilized for a brief period of time until the bike cools down. The game plays well and controls well. I had a good time in the first play mode adjusting to the control mechanics and before I knew it I was able to beat the best track time for track 1. Selection B is a separate game mode that pits the player against three other computer controlled racers. The difficulty seems to be a bit steeper in this game mode as the airborne controls seem to be more important to the player's success. I felt that the game mode was even more enjoyable than Selection A and I had a fun time racing against other players. Unfortunately there is no two player split screen for these types of races. I would have liked to see this option for multiplayer fun. The third game mode is the design mode. This gives the player the ability to design their own track to race on. I felt that giving the player this option adds some replayability to this game. It is a shame that you cannot save your track like you could in the Japanese version of the game. This game is great fun for a quick play. I would recommend it to anyone new to the NES library as the game is fairly common and can be found for a cheaper price. see what this one is. This one's a boxed game. It's boxed. And it's complete in box. Is it complete? Complete in box. Vegas Stakes. So, from Casino Games. 
and oh, a video games monthly pen. Kind of cool. That was in the box. That's kind of weird. It didn't come with the little white piece either. So, you know what? What I guess I'm gonna do is, since they sent me two, uh, I'm definitely gonna have to contact them and uh, see what's going on. But um, either way, I'm gonna just show these games in a review, um, uh, and I'll just give a sh short and quick review about it. Um, <laughs> you can probably tell by the look on my face that I'm pretty bummed that I got two games that I got last week. Um, you know. So that's a bummer. I'm gonna contact them about that and, and talk to them. Uh, Vegas Stakes looks like it's in good shape. Uh, like I said, it, it is missing that little white foam piece, or not foam, uh, cardboard. It is missing that white cardboard piece, but that's all right. It's kind of cool, cool looking at least. So Vegas Stakes is in the box, which is pretty cool. Has the manual and everything. Uh, let's get in to the review of Vegas Stakes. Vegas Stakes, known in Japan as Vegas Dream, is a casino gambling game for the Super Nintendo. The game was developed by HAL Laboratory and released in April of 1993. This version does support the Super Nintendo mouse as well as a multi-tap and up to three players can play the game at once. The poker game cannot be played in multiplayer mode due to the fact that everyone would see each other's hand. The game sees the player journey to Las Vegas to gamble with a budget of $1,000. Using that small budget, the player must try to win $10 million. $10 million? Who do they think they got? Chelsea Clinton? If the player loses the money, it is game over and they must start over with their same $1,000 budget. There are six casino games in Vegas Stakes, which include Blackjack, Poker, Craps, Roulette, and the Slot Machines. The gameplay is what you would expect from a casino game. You wager your bet and hope that the odds are in your favor. I can see this game having some playability in 1993 because there was less casino games on the market, but today the gameplay is uninspiring and stale. To be honest, I might be the only person playing this game in 2018. Overall, I would steer clear of this game because it seems to offer nothing new or innovative in the casino game formula. Hey guys, just a quick update. I wanted to let you all know, I did contact Video Games Monthly and uh, I let them know about the, the duplicate games that they sent me. Uh, I ended up making a mistake on the Sonic Spinball. Uh, but the Excite Bike was definitely checked off the list. They made it right. They did send me a, a game, which I'll get to here in a second. I just wanted to go through how they made it right. Um, so long story short, I contacted Video Games Monthly. I let them know that Excite Bike was definitely on the list. Sonic Spinball was not on the list. Uh, they did end up telling me that they're going to send me one game uh, because of the mistake. They even joked about it and said that uh, their mascot, this guy right here, they said he must have had two, one too many beers on his break and uh, ended up sending me the wrong game. So we joked, we laughed, we had a good time about it. And in my response email, I said, well, you know, maybe your mascot should send me something a little bit more um, interesting for my viewers, for me to review. So they did end up sending me one game and it came in this week. Uh, this is why the video has been released so late in the month. I, I do want to get these videos out there a little bit earlier, uh, usually a couple days after I receive them. But <clears throat> what they sent me is not not what I was expecting. I was hoping for them to send me something a little bit more interesting, something that I could show you viewers, something that had some more immersive gameplay. But what I got in return was not a good game, not a good game at all. So. I am disappointed in Video Games Monthly. Uh, I'm going to stick with their service for another month and, and see if, if the next box is a little bit better, but this box um, I wasn't too happy with. So what they sent me was 
Bart vs. Space Mutants, and oh my lord, is this game something else. It's a very, very, very poorly made video game. Must have been rushed uh, during development. I'm going to switch over to the review of this game, and uh, I'll come back here after the review of this game, and we'll talk more a little bit about video games monthly. So, check out the review of Bart vs. Space Mutants. Developed by Imagineering and published by Acclaim in 1991, Bart vs. Space Mutants was released to mix reviews on a number of platforms. The game sees you assuming the role of Bart Simpson, who is trying to prevent the Space Mutants from taking over the world. This is the first game in a series of Simpsons games for the Nintendo Entertainment System. The game requires the player to foil the alien's plans through a series of levels. I wish I could show you more, but I couldn't get through the first level before I lost interest. The first level of the game requires you to find anything that is purple and paint it red. Yeah, that's what you do during the first level of the game. Paint things that are purple red. Bart can only take up to two hits before shouting out, eat my shorts, and dying. You better get used to hearing that because if you play this game, you will be dying a lot. The difficulty in this game is outrageous. If you die three times, you start over from the beginning. No password system, no saving, no continues. You start back at stage one. The difficulty alone is enough to ruin the game for you, but there are more problems with the game that I'm not a fan of. The controls are worse than most NES games of this time. It was 1991, how could this happen? The hit detection in this game seems to be off. Maybe this game just isn't my cup of tea. It seems like a game that you would have to practice over and over and over again. The best way to enjoy this game would be to emulate it and use save states. Save often and you might be able to beat the game. The game holds no value for me. If you see it out in the wild or at a retro game store, stay away from it at all cost. This game can eat my shorts. Alright guys, so I hope you enjoyed uh, the video. If, if you liked the video, leave a comment, like, and subscribe. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm starting to try to build my page and trying to get my videos out there. If you like this kind of stuff, share it with your friends so that they can see it as well. Uh, <clears throat> other than that, we'll come back here next month and hopefully we'll get a better, a better box from Video Games Monthly. This month was disappointing uh, to say the least. So I'll catch you next time here on my Video Games Monthly Review. Have a nice day.